I thought that we could talk about fractions. So, for instance, 1 over 2, also known as 1 half. Okay, so another one would be 2 over 5 or 2 fifths. And then there are more complicated ones like 18 over 42. And, well, you know, there is something a little wrong here, which is that uh, the top and the bottom, you can both divide them by 2. And then you get that this is 9 over 21. And, oh, I'm not done. And so it's 3, 7. I wanted to do this example because all the fractions I'm going to consider, they're going to be reduced like this, namely, it's going to be of the form p over q, where p and q are integers, and they are what we call co-prime, namely, that they have no common divisor. We've cancelled them down as far as they can go. That's completely correct, yes. And now, if you remember with fractions, you can do things. You can add them up, or you can multiply them. And multiplication is fairly easy, because if I want to take, for instance, 2 over 5, 2 fifths, and I want to multiply it with 3 over 7, I take the two numbers at the top, I multiply them, and I take the two numbers at the bottom, and I multiply them, and so that gives me 6 over 35. That's pretty simple. However, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, if you want to add them, I'm going to tell you what it is not equal to. I have to put a big not like this. So it is not 2 plus 3 divided by 5 plus 7, 5 over 12. I hope you remember that you're not supposed to do that. Okay, so let me remind you of what you are supposed to do. You're going to reduce them to a common denominator, which in this case will be 5 times 7. I just want to remind you of what people told you you should always do. But we could ask ourselves, what if we decide that this was the correct rule? We're going to break the rules, are we? We're going to break the rules, yes, and we're going to venture in a brand new world. Because I don't want to go against uh, the other people, we're going to create a new addition. And to remember it's new, this plus, I'm going to put a circle around it, 5 over 12. It's a symbol that we mathematicians, we use a lot. Uh, every time we mean, well, it's not quite what you think it is. Eh? We could put a hat on top, we do things like that, or a tilde. Okay, and so let, let me do it with letters like this P and Q, that would mean that P over Q, funny addition, P prime over Q prime is P plus P prime divided by q plus q prime. Probably you never heard of it, but it's actually well known among mathematicians and it has a name. That's called, so I'm going to write the Fare addition. Named after John Fare, who was mostly known as a geologist in the uh, end of the 18th century. My intention is to show you that this funny addition actually comes up in two very different contexts. The original one discovered by Fare and another one which will be called the Ford Circles. What we're going to do is that we're going to list all possible fractions. There are a lot of numbers, so we're going to only to focus on the ones between 0 and 1. Eh, that's going to um, shrink. Eh, so here is the number line, and I'm going to be between 0 and 1. And uh, by the way, uh, 1 is a fraction, it's 1 over 1. 0 is also a fraction, it's 0 over 1. There is 1 half. 1 fourth, 3 fourths, and then there is 1 third, which is probably somewhere like here, 2 thirds, somewhere like this. If of course, I can keep going for a long time because there are infinitely many numbers. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to stop and I'm going to take the numbers PQ. So first of all, between 0, including 0, and 1, and then where Q 
Well, I cannot go infinitely, so I'm going to assume q is going to be less than a certain number, so I, let's say 234. This is, there is nothing special about 234, it's just 2, 3, 4. Eh? That's, uh, I don't have much imagination when picking numbers. And so I'm going to do it and I start doing it and uh, there are quite a few numbers like that. Eh? So, <laughs> probably between 20 and 40,000. Eh? So perhaps I'm not going to do it in front of you. I have a computer. And so I did it. That's and not, that's not 20,000 fractions. I only got a little piece of it. Because when I use my computer, I got pages and pages and pages and pages. And so I get all these numbers between 119 over 81 and uh, 103 over 154. If you think about it, it's about two thirds. So one is just a little below and one is a little after. And actually there should be two thirds somewhere. Ah, yes, here. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah. it's a very small piece of the whole list. So we get all the numbers in that very small interval and they are in order. They, they come up in this order exactly. And so that looks like there doesn't seem to be anything special about this list, right? You remember that funny addition where you add up the two numbers at the top and the two bottom? You see it here. Look, for instance, you take these three numbers here. Look at the one in the middle. 148, well, that's exactly the sum of 123 and of 25. And then 225, that's exactly the sum of 187 and 38. And you see that in many, many places. So let's see if we can find another one like that. Okay, look, 100, these three, I mean, 103 plus 35, 138. 156 plus 53, uh, uh, 209. Huh? 31 plus 95, that's 126. 47 for 144, uh, 191. And then it's pretty clear that there are examples uh, where uh, this is not one of those Fari addition. Like you have the ones where in the middle the term is ma way, way smaller. Look at this one here. Eh? If I take the sum of the two, the Fari sum of the two on the edges, so that gives me 212 divided by 300 in and on the paper, it's 53 over 80. Eh, that's not the same, right? Well, except, wait a minute, you remember how I can simplify fractions? Look, clearly the top and the bottom, I can divide by two. I can cancel out. There is also a two as a factor here. I, I divide by two, the top and the bottom. I'm going a little faster, over 80. Hey, hey. <laughs> So that was a Ferry sum. That's a Ferry sum. And so let me show you how to pick a Ferry sum in this piece of paper. What you do is this. Every time I take three consecutive numbers here, then the one in the middle is the Ferry sum of the two on the sides. And what's amazing is that when I change my number 234 here, if I take something else, like for example, if I take 200, then I'm losing this number. It's, it will not be on my list anymore. However, the next, uh, the, the, the one that is close, that's going to be this one probably, I will still have this property. It's very surprising, to some extent, unbelievable. And it took a while for mathematicians to be able to devise a complete proof of that result. And uh, the one uh, who did that was uh, Cauchy, one of the great mathematicians of the 19th century. When we find something really surprising, we want to know, is this a coincidence? Or is there a deep fact behind that? Or at least, is this always true? I'm going to do some geometry and construct circles. I'm going to use the number line that I had here, but here is the following recipe what I'm going to use. Whenever I see the number p over q, again, where p and q have no common divisors, 
Then I'm going to draw the circle, which is tangent to the number line, which is above the number line, and whose diameter is, well, I could use any formula, but my pinky tells me I should use 1 over q squared. Let's do it. So, 1 half. At the bottom, I have 2. Q is equal to 2, so I'm going to go on 1 over 2 squared, namely 1 over 4. So it sort of looks roughly like this. Let's do 1 third here, 1 ninth. Oh, this one, I don't completely know, but my pinky just told me that it touches like this. And then 1 quarter. Oh, my pinky uh, is better than my drawing skills. And then here, by the way, is 1 over 1. I had to draw the circle of radius 1 over 1 square, namely 1. It's this big circle here. And it turns out that it's going to look the same with this one here. Okay. And then I can keep going, but as you, I think I convince you of one thing, which is that my drawing skills are not very good. But fortunately, I have my trusted computer, so it's much smaller than this. This is the circle going at 0 over 1, radius, uh, diameter 1. The one going over 1, 1 over 1, diameter 1, 1, 1. So these big circles are all above the integers. And then above the half integers, I'm going to get a circle of radius 1 quarter. And then above the multiples of 1 third, I don't know if you can see, 1 third, I have a circle of radius 1 ninth, and then it's beginning to be really hard to see. I can also use my computer and Look, here there is one third and one half. I'm zooming in, one third, one half, and then it's what you have in between, and you have that, and then you have more, and then you could go, I don't know, like this, or how about here, between 5 over 11 and 6 over 13, and it keeps going. Okay, so it, it is funny that with my funny rules like this, All these circles, you see, they, they, they are tangent to each other. They, they, they touch, but they don't overlap. Yeah, so, uh, and there is no space in between. Right? They, they, they do touch. This is called the Ford circle packing. And actually, there is some geometry here that you can show. When you have two of these circles which touch each other, and then you have the number line here, there is a unique circle which touches the number line and these two circles here. Okay, that's a little bit of a geometrical fact. Look, 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 look at this. So I was taking this one. 11 over 24, 17 over 37, and the one that touches these two circles and the number line, that's, oh my God, that's 28 over 61. 11 plus 17, that's 28. 24 plus 37, that's 61. It's a cow, what have you done? It's back. <laughs> It's coming back. So we have these Fare uh, addition everywhere in this picture. Again, this is true for any three circles that touch each other like that in this whole picture, like this one here, this pattern is closely related to uh, non-Euclidean geometry. I cannot completely explain the details, but there is something deep behind that. This origin point. So you can deductively reason what happens here. Okay, Brady. So this big circle is this one. And this circle is this one. Now, what happens to this circle here? Well, again, We don't have to measure anything. This circle here touches the big circle and touches this circle. 